Our cosmos is undoubtedly interconnected, comparable to a vast neural network of nodal points where consciousness perpetuates or rotates. Rotations, and the speed at which everything is spinning, is also correlational, and if something is altered within a system of spinning points, be it electrons around an atom or planets around a star, the very framework of that system rebalances itself out to another form. This is why the configuration in our solar system remains harmonious despite being visibly damaged, and energetically even more so. In this video we're going to show you some of the ways in which planets have retained their harmonic orbital patterns despite being somewhat constricted by other orbits either weakened, strengthened, or lost entirely. Our closest planetary neighbors make the most exquisite patterns around us, over repeated periods of time, something we cannot deny, yet have not yet fully understood. Though it goes without saying, this is a contemporary solar system. It is constricted from its original form, and thus the energy field supporting it as well. This damage is not entirely permanent, however. Within our lifetimes, it won't change much. The orbital patterns we'll be presenting today are no coincidences. These are the orbits that the planetary bodies have been dancing in since their own creation. Perhaps the most extraordinary model ever created for marrying the cycles of other planets to our own comes from the ancient Mayan solar calendar system. By 900 AD, they had modeled most of the visible solar system with just three cycles. They had already known about the geometries implied within the orbits of these same planets. Every pair of planets creates what's called a single dance. It doesn't matter which of the two you stand on, your partner's dance around you will be the same. It is a shared experience. Ultra-slow harmonic ratios are doled out every dance, and thus we have what is called the music of the spheres. The easiest observable thing we can do to this day with the inner orbits is see a perfect Tribeca or Celtic Trinity knot coming out of the orbits of Mercury and Venus. If you take three round glasses of water and push them together into a triangle, you'll have an extremely accurate ratio of these two planets' orbits. If Mercury's mean orbit passes through the centers of the three circles, then Venus encloses the figure, and thus we have a Tribeca. Venus, our closest neighbor, kisses us in a dance once every 584 days as she passes between us and the Sun. Each time of these kisses occurs, the Sun, Venus, and the Earth line up two-fifths of a circle further around, so a pentagram of conjunctions is drawn, taking exactly eight Earth years, or 13 Venusian years. Notice the Fibonacci numbers again, 5, 8, and 13, which govern most plant growth on Earth. Venus rotates extremely slowly on her own axes in the opposite direction to most rotations in the solar system. Her rotation period is precisely two-thirds of an Earth year, a musical fifth. This closely harmonizes with the dance so that every time Venus and Earth kiss, Venus does so with her same face pointing at the Earth. Over the eight Earth years of the five kisses, Venus spins on her own axes 12 times in 13 of her years. Mercury and Earth's physical sizes are in the same relation as their mean orbits. The diameter of Mercury's innermost orbit also happens to be the distance between the mean orbits of the two planets. Eight circles centered on Venus's orbit produce Earth's mean orbit. The eight years of the five kisses, perhaps. From the surface of the Earth, the Sun and the Moon appear the same size. According to modern cosmology, this is just a coincidence. But the balance between these two primary bodies is clear proof of very ancient configurations. The size of the moon compared to the Earth is 3 to 11. 3 elevenths happens to be 27.3%, and the moon orbits Earth every 27.3 days, the same period as the average rotation period of a sunspot. The sun and the moon do seem very much a unified couple. The next planet out from Earth is the fourth planet, Mars. Kepler had tried a dodecahedron spacing the orbits of Mars and Earth, and an icosahedron spacing Earth from Venus, and coincidentally, it turns out he was very close to the mark. The dodecahedron made of 12 pentagons, and the icosahedron made out of 20 equilateral triangles, are the last two of the five platonic solids. They form a pair, as each creates the other from the centers of its faces. In the ancient sciences, the icosahedron was associated with the element of water, 
so it is appropriate to see it emanating from our watery planet. The largest of the asteroids by a very long way is Ceres, comprising over one third of the total mass of all of them. She is about the size of the British Isles, and produces a perfect 18-fold pattern with Earth. Four groups of moons orbit Jupiter. The first two groups have four moons each and look very like a model of the whole solar system. Four small inner bodies followed by four big outer bodies. The second group of four particularly large moons, the Galileans, is further divided into two small rocky worlds, Io and Europa, and then two gas and ice moons, the size of planets, Ganymede and Callisto. The grouping into fours is striking. Each of the four groups has its own general moon size, orbital plane, period, and distance from Jupiter. Saturn has over 30 moons, most shepherding and tuning the amazing rings with the larger bodies tending to be further out. Here are some harmonic patterns. Two from Jupiter's largest moons, two experienced by Saturn's giant moon Titan, and two experienced by Neptune, the outer planet of the solar system. Discords are rare. The solar system seems to enjoy harmony. Jupiter, the largest planet, a delightful feature of its orbit is its pair of asteroid clusters. The Trojans are two groups of asteroids which move around Jupiter's orbit, 60 degrees ahead of it and 60 degrees behind. This partnership perpetually moves around the Sun as though held in place by the spokes of a wheel. The positions of the Trojan clusters are known as the Laplace points, with Sun, Jupiter, and Trojans forming gravitationally balanced equilateral triangles. If we now join the spokes as shown here, then three hexagrams can be seen to produce Earth's mean orbit from Jupiter's, a very easy trick. Earth's and Jupiter's orbits are thus lurking in every crystal. Another name for a six-pointed star is made out of two triangles, and is the base form of a Merkaba. Jupiter and Saturn, these two top diagrams show the close 5 to 2 ratio of their periods. Top left we see their dance. The beautiful threefold harmonic is immediately apparent, spinning slowly because of the slight miss in the harmony. From Earth, this pattern is seen as an important sequence of conjunctions and oppositions of Jupiter and Saturn, who kiss every 20 years. Top right, we see the hexagram created by these positions, with conjunctions marked on the outside of the zodiac and oppositions marked inside. The planets move anti-clockwise around the dashed circle of the ecliptic, starting at 12 o'clock, Jupiter moving faster than Saturn. The lower diagram shows the relative speeds of orbit of Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn. We start with the three planets in a synodic line at 12 o'clock. Earth orbits much faster than the outer planets, and makes a complete circuit of the Sun, and then a bit more before lining up with the slow coach Saturn again for a synod of 378 days. Three weeks later, it lines up again with Jupiter. This lines up with the golden section, and is defined by the Fibonacci sequence to a stunning 99 degree accuracy. The two giants of our solar system thus focus the golden section on us, in space and time, reinforcing the geometry of life on Earth. Less importantly, Saturn takes the same number of years to go around the Sun as there are days between full moons. If you ever want to incorporate Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus's orbits into a window or floor design, the diagram here might help. An equilateral triangle and an octogram proportion the outer, mean, and inner orbits of the three largest planets. Tiny inaccuracies are visible, but the fit is excellent overall, memorable, and adequate for many practical purposes. It is a spiky inversion of the touching circles solution for the first three planets. Moving further out into the solar system, Triangular geometries prevail. Uranus and Neptune, like Saturn, both have mysterious ring systems with clear spaces, where particles orbit at periods harmonic with one or more moons. Uranus's bright outer ring has a diameter twice of that of Uranus itself, echoing the orbits of Uranus and Saturn, and Neptune's innermost ring is two-thirds the size of its outermost. These proportions beautifully invoke the local timing, as Neptune's orbital period is twice that of Uranus, and Uranus's is two-thirds that of Pluto, an outer reflection of the inner harmonic 1 to 2 to 3 we saw with Mercury. One of the most obvious symmetries our modern cosmology occurs in that the Milky Way, the plane of our own galaxy, is tilted at almost exactly 60 degrees to the ecliptic or plane of our solar system. The last thing we want to point out today are ice halos. These are basically rainbows that denote where the planets lie. 
On certain still afternoons, if you're lucky, you'll see a pair of rainbow spots left and right of the sun, known as sun dogs. These are the first elements to appear of an ice halo, a thin rainbow circle around the sun. Caused by light passing through ice crystals high in the atmosphere, sun dogs appear 22 and a half degrees left and right of the sun, just outside the bright 22 degree halo. Sometimes, a second larger halo appears 46 degrees from the sun with a distinctive arc on top, the whole arrangement looking strangely similar to the ancient glyph for Mercury. Amazingly, these two ice halos match the mean orbits of the inner two planets Mercury and Venus, as seen from the surface of the Earth. This means that when you look at a double ice halo, you really are seeing the spheres of the mean orbits of Mercury and Venus hanging in the sky. And what is more, the same two ice halos also function as a diagram of the relative orbits of Venus and Mars. This is extraordinary. Every circle fits. Sunlight and ice dust paint orbits as rainbows while the sun and moon appear the same size in our sky. Our closest neighbor dances fivefold around us every eight years or 13 of her years, while below on Earth, plants also dance 5, 8, and 13. These coincidences are focused on us, here and now, a planet of conscious observers. Perhaps consciousness has played some part in creating this. Could the act of observation lends reality in some way? Do beautiful, improbable coincidences surround other planets of observers? Plato writes that things are more perfectly organized than we can ever imagine. How do you balance a sun and a moon? Could we in fact be living in a conscious quantum holographic universe? More likely that the original configuration of our solar system has actually just been constricted as it would make sense for all of the orbits to now be confined to the Fibonacci sequence as they are now in the Biveca configuration rather than the Triveca crystal spiral configuration. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you have a great day.